Yuja goes from a whiny bottom to a power bottom, which is super fun to see. And while Jinhu is primarily the dom in most of their encounters, there are times when Yuja takes charge. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be discussing Delivery Complete by Lee Sona. And this review is thanks in part to those of you who took part in my poll. This was the last choice in the poll. Well, technically it was a tie. <laughs> Neighbors meet under embarrassing circumstances. And if you'd like to check out the other two options, you can watch them by clicking the annotation or the links in the description. If you'd like to help decide what we get to read next, go ahead and subscribe, get your BL library card for the BL library, and be on the lookout for my community posts with the polls. Before we get started, there will be spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled on this manhwa, go ahead and click off now. No worries, I'll catch you next time. For those of you who decide to stick around, let's go over some content warnings. There may be references to BDSM, power imbalance, social gap, dubcon, coercion, voyeurism, excessive drinking, prejudice, homomesia, and perceived cheating as these things do appear in the manhwa. But if that's good with you, let's go and get started. UJ Lim is an erotic BL writer. To help inspire him and help him out in the bedroom, he frequently orders various adult toys online. When he receives the delivery notification, he excitedly rushes to his front door to get it. But when he opens the door, he finds nothing. After some investigation with the delivery man, UJ finds that his package was mistakenly delivered to his neighbor's door. No big deal. He heads over, knocks, and requests his package. But what he gets back is not a perfectly intact package. Instead, it's open, and his neighbor's giving him quite a look. Horrified, humiliated, and thoroughly embarrassed, UJ is ready to run and hide. Before he goes though, his neighbor issues a warning. If another of his pervy packages ends up at his door, he'll use it on UJ. UJ is determined to make sure that doesn't happen. Yet the next delivery he gets isn't at his door, and his neighbor is already waiting for him. Just who is this guy and why won't he leave UJ alone? To start with, I have to admit, I hate this art. It's so unattractive to me and super inconsistent, and I honestly considered dropping it a few times. Our top Jinhu in particular is uber weird looking to me, which is funny since he's the weirder looking of the two despite being a quote, hot actor. UJ on the other hand, while equally inconsistent, does look more attractive in more panels. He was a very nice reprieve, but he has these glasses that are always askew with huge nose pads that made me cackle. <laughs> the art does get better, only minutely so, but what's wild is how good this artist works is outside of the series. I was shocked when I saw the author's note because it looked like someone else drew it. What happened between the note and the series, I couldn't say, but it's a really unfortunate change in style. But it's not all bad. This does have elements that I like, such as big beefy men. I love a petite femme man as much as the next Fujo, but seeing two buff men is such a treat. Plus our bottom UJ is bigger than Jinhu. This is the kind of smaller top and bigger bottom work I love. It's unfortunate that it's so common for this setup with a bigger bottom to tip have a super young looking top mixed in, but that's not the case here. Unfortunately, the size difference isn't as pronounced, but having them both look like adults is a huge win as far as I'm concerned. And though UJ doesn't look great because of this art style, some parts of him look absolutely delectable in the smutty scenes. Smut can make up for a lot, and while the smut here doesn't completely save this title, it certainly helped. With that said, for a title with 30 main episodes and 3 extra episodes, there is a ton of smut. If I had to give it percentages, this is 95% smut and 5% everything else. Else. It's a very superficial story, which isn't always a bad thing. The best part about the smut though is that it is lots of playful BDSM power dynamic goodness. UJ goes from a whiny bottom to a power bottom, which is super fun to see. And while Jinhu is primarily the dom in most of their encounters, there are times when UJ takes charge. It's always fun to see a couple that's willing to switch power in the bedroom. I was really hoping we might get a verse couple too, but unfortunately not this time around. Still, if you're looking for play with lots of toys, some switching between dom and sub roles, and of course some beefy men, this has it all. Now as for the story, this thing flies by and not in a good way. Jinhu is a major asshole. He opens up a package that isn't addressed to him, then threatens the package owner like he was the reason it was misdelivered. When Jinhu discovers UJ is writing down their sexual escapades like a self-insert fanfic, he gets pissed and calls it vulgar shit before leaving. How are all these asshole things handled? They're kind of not. UJ just accepts that he's sex partners with Jinhu now because of the misdeliveries, and after being told his work is shit, they have a single conversation where they both apologize and then they move on. As an erotic writer myself, seeing Jinhu call UJ's work vulgar shit really burned my biscuits. If my partner had said that to me, I would have needed a bit more time and more than an apology because this is my work and my art. Smut writing is a valid form of art, not vulgar shit, but maybe I just got too into my feelings here. Regardless, Jinhu is super mean unnecessarily, 
throughout the story. And rather than sitting down and having any kind of character development, they just move on and have sex, which makes it hard for me to root for their relationship. Was Gene Hu right for being mad about their intimate time being noted down? Sure, I understand that, but he's still a jackass. With all that being said, this is a miss. The art is subpar, which is wild since the art in the author's note is so much better than the art in the series. The story is superficial, and what story there is can be so frustrating that it doesn't feel like it's worth reading. But if you just want lots of smut with some beefy men, then this has what you're looking for. I personally still don't think it's worth reading, even considering the smut, but here we are. I don't recommend this one. So have you read Delivery Complete? If so, what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not? Let me know in the comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye!